Him. I do believe it is Friday. I do believe I'm looking at the correct camera. Welcome everybody to Wake and Base. How are y'all doing? I hope y'all been having a fantastic week. Hope y'all have survived <laughs> having only one Wake and Base this week. I know it hurt me. I missed hanging out with everybody here and I missed waking up and doing all this good stuff, but dissertation calls, 20th century German literature about the Apollonian and the Dionysian. Please somebody help me. <laughs> But that's not what we're here to do today. Today we're here to talk about a fantastic artist named Harumi Hasono. This is a classic artist who is one of these people that it is a crime that has taken us all the way to episode 59 to just, to just scratch the surface of all the wonderful work that he has done. Not only does he have a huge solo career of something in the neighborhood of 35 albums, giving Tatsuro a definite run for his money, but he's also the leader of Yellow Magic Orchestra. He's had huge influences on other bands. He was in uh, Tin Pin, this uh, very famous Japanese band that was going on in the late 70s, early 80s. We're going to look at all of that. Some very interesting musicians that we know very well who got their start here with Hosono. But, as we always have to do, as much as I love starting the morning with Takanaka, we have to say goodbye to our Malibu. But, when we say goodbye to Malibu, that means we get to say good morning to our Waken base. Yay! <laughs> and let's go ahead and switch over here so we can see the cat we're talking about today, Haromi Hosono. And while we're doing that, I'm going to also take this opportunity to say good morning to everybody. What's up, Zal? Daniela? Poppy? What's up, Poppy Puppy? Hope he's doing well today. What's going on? Japanese. Can't read Japanese. <laughs> but good morning. <laughs> and then what's going on? Uh, what's going on, Dave's uh, Pop Bass Me? City. What's going on with everybody? Glad to have you here. So today, what we're going to be looking at is Hosono's very first solo album, which is called Hosono House appropriate name. Now we've got some very interesting things going on with this album, but before we dive in too much and talk about some of the uh, the hidden fun little secrets of this album, let's go ahead and listen to the first track and get a little bit of a vibe of what we're getting into here today. Because it's different from our normal city pop that we have been used to this far. And I'm very happy to say we're taking a little bit of a walk over to the Beatles side of the street. I'm excited. Good morning, Getting some strong McCartney vibes here. A little bit of linen too, but that just the right amount of jangly guitar accompanied by a little bit of bass and not percussion as much as percussive strings. <laughs> In fact, we don't have any percussion. Good morning, everybody else in the stream. It always takes me a while to get started here. <laughs> What's up, Break? Good to see you. I'm always down for the dirty rush. ATO represent. Kirksville, Missouri. Don't dox me. <laughs> Morning, Al. What's going on? What's going on? Okay. Fantastic song here. Fantastic song. So this is uh, going to be the point where I bring up our first interesting fact about this album. This entire album we're listening to today was recorded inside of Hosono's apartment. So right during this time, this is 1973, early on in home recording development at least. But this whole album 
is I'm reading right here off of the Wikipedia article specifically for this album. Uh, the album was recorded for five hours every afternoon in a 144 square foot large bedroom in Hosono's residence in Sayama, Japan with a 16 track mixing console. That's the same console that I have, it's in the other room, but same thing, very basic setup. The instruments were recorded unprocessed from the amplifiers in a small room, leading to the album's unique sound. So, when we hear a lot of that extra hiss, 90% of the time, that would be Alex 63501 not knowing how to hook up his equipment, but not today. Today, some of that extra background noise, some of that extra hiss, some of that extra sound quality that kind of gives us that 60s, 70s vibe is part of it. We don't have processed sound. We don't have what are called shielded cables on everything. So you're going to get a little extra hiss. You're not going to have that super balanced processed sound. However, as we just heard with that first song, the balance between treble and bass was perfect. And y'all know me. I got to mess with all the knobs. I didn't touch one knob. I kept it all exactly the same. Pretty good job, Asano. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now, let's go ahead and get into our second track here, because I always go to the wrong tracks at the wrong time. But not today. Today, I'm resolute in doing this properly. So that was rock a My Baby, our first opening track here. And the second track we're going into is called Boku Wa Choto. I have no idea what that means, but let's go ahead and give it a listen and uh, see if I can look it up, figure out what that means for us. Second track off of Hosono House, 1973. Oh yeah, we got some sleeping days for you. Thanks for being with us, brother. Good to have you. All the way from Australia. I love it. We'll make it worth your time. And 4 p.m. in Germany. See, there we go. Hey, and Master of Alcon, help, help me read Faust. Please help me read Faust. It's so hard. Thomas Mann. I like how the uh, the chat was trying to tell me the name, and I thought that they were just all losing their mind, calling each other insane. No, that's what it is. <laughs> it means I'm a bit, or I'm a little bit, just a little bit. Choto. I'm assuming that's what that means. Exactly, and I'm doing direct translations. Anybody in the chat, you tell me, y'all got the truth. I believe y'all. <laughs> All right, you're probably noticing the pretty big smile on my face right now if y'all are watching the video and not just listening to this. Man, this is exactly up my, my alley of talking about 60s rock and roll. So I've already mentioned we got the Beatles, that kind of sound here. Uh, as it's mentioned on the Wikipedia article talking about this album, they list Hosono's main influences as James Taylor's album, One Man Dog, and the band's album, Music from Big Pink. And these fuse a lot of different genres, just again, mousing over what they boil it down to on the Wikipedia version. Uh, <clears throat> music from Big Pink, which is the band, their album, they put it as folk, rock, country, R&B, soul, they put a little salt shaker and pepper of everything in there. But, as you can hear in this song particularly, We've got a really interesting use of slide guitar, which is absolutely not a Japanese instrument. Let's go back a little bit and listen to this slide guitar solo here, because we've got a very, very cool solo. So it doesn't, you can't really tell yet that it's a slide guitar. that. Okay, so for those of y'all who have never seen a slide guitar before, it's a permutation of just a regular guitar, but what they did is they took the neck, they took the body off, and they just have a neck with the strings, 
standing with a pedal instead of a whammy bar. It's it's an interesting kind of, I don't know if it came, it probably came before the whammy bar. The other thing that is uh, analogous to that is what's called the Bigsby Bridge. Let me see if I can find you a guitar. Gibson guitar with Bigsby Bridge. There we go. Um, so this right here, I'll scroll down so y'all can see this a little bit better. So this giant metal contraction, <laughs> contraction, contraption that's on here is a whammy bar, except it's so much more powerful. You can really pull up and push in very accurately and get these really smooth bends on really thick strings. Something that you can't do so much with the Eddie Van Halen style whammy bar kind of thing. But what we're looking at here is called a slide guitar or a lap guitar. A, well, okay, slide guitar, let's do lap. There we go. So, right, these are all different permutations of it. Ha, here's the one that I'm thinking of, the most common one that you see are things like, whoops, well maybe, maybe it'll let me do it, maybe it won't, is this right here. This is what we're looking at. So we've got the frets, laying down horizontally instead of being up on your lap and you slide something across the top and what that allows you to do is get these real smooth pitch bend kind of things that sound really really cool and as we're getting this next track set up for you here I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my guitar and show you a little example of how this works because it's a one-two combo not only is it a technique with your hands on the instrument it's also a little bit of knob control so, we'll go to our next track here, we'll check out a little bit more Hisono, and then I'll see if I can't get some slide guitar set up for y'all. So, the next thing we're going into is Choo Choo Got a Goto. And I'm really hoping that this is referencing Tsugoshi Goto, because he's one of the bass players. I don't think he's in this album, but he makes an appearance at some point. So let's go ahead and pop this one in here. Boom. Make our switch over here on the old decks. Shlaba. And let's hit play. Ooh, sounds like a choo choo train already. Okay, so we even got a better connection here from Break, talking about our last song that had the country reference. The lyrics are referencing country music. So there we go. Thank you, Break. And I have a feeling. Oh, baby, we're rewinding for this. Oh, I think we're talking about choo-choo trains. I think we're talking about choo-choo trains. I'm starting it over. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. guitar in there. Again, for those of y'all just joining us, this entire album was recorded in a room smaller than mine over the course of a couple months in 1973 in a bedroom on a 16-track recorder. No processing, no professional mixing, just Hosono and his friends shredding in a bedroom, direct in. Pretty cool. Choo-choo. Here we go. 
All right, we got a pretty sweet shred solo going on here by Hasono. In fact, let's listen to that. That's, we need that. Oh yeah, that's cool. So right now we got some pretty chill guitar going on here. So oh man, Sono, calling us all on the funk train. He's just like, get on, get on the train with me. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> all right, so as we're fading out here, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the guitar. What's happening here? I'm gonna switch over a little bit to our studio view here, so you can see a little bit better. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, see how messy my room is. So, talking about the differences in the guitar styles that we've got here, not knowing exactly what instrument he's playing, looking at the era, he's most likely playing either a Fender or a Squire, most likely a Fender, some kind of either Stratocaster or a Telecaster. This right here is a Stratocaster model. So that has to do with the body type whenever you hear Stratocaster or Telecaster or if you hear the Gibson Les Paul or the Gibson hollow body, those kinds of things. That's what that has to do with. Oh, I lost my pick. <laughs> There's my pick. <laughs> so as we're talking about what he's doing in the piece here, we've got our standard, you know, little guitar lines. Those kinds of things. It's got kind of a rounder tone as I bash my microphone. I can flip my switch up here, make it a little warmer. I can change my knob, change the tone again. I'm nice and out of tune, all that kind of good stuff. Now, what we can do to make that a little more interesting here is I can use my volume knob. If I turn it all the way down, you don't hear anything. You're gonna hear something through the mic, but you don't hear the tone. If I play the note and then open it up, you hear my note, but you don't hear the beginning of my note. So what I can do, if I can do it right here, if I can slam my fingers, You can make this kind of wah, 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 wah. Yeah, groovy. <laughs> Talking about Corey Wong. This is a guy from uh, Wolfpack. Unbelievable funk band. And just, they're kind of their own thing. They have their own sound. Really, really phenomenal. But on the slide guitar, we're doing this combination of hitting something while opening the volume. That kind of thing. On top of sliding it on top of your leg. So I'm going to switch out here for a second. <laughs> and what they're pretty much doing is setting it on their lap. They change the tuning so that the tuning is an open. So when I hit something, it's a full chord, which is kind of close right there. But if I'm doing, it's a little, what's it? Cowboy Bebop or Trigun. Now, I'm using an old lighter that I got from Italy several years ago that's not exactly the best thing to be sliding on top of your strings, but if you had something like a piece of glass or if you had some kind of really nice piece of metal, you can change the sound. I'm, I'm frantically looking around to see if I have, I've got a pin case. I don't think this is gonna work. Eh, that works okay. You see why I play the bass and not the slide guitar. Anyway, that's the whole idea behind that. So we've got our slide guitar here. Hosono is really hitting all the basses. I show this to you just to show you the idea that you don't have to have a proper slide guitar to get these kinds of sounds. You can mess around with your knobs. You can do all this kind of stuff. And again, for those of y'all just joining us, this entire album today recorded in a room half the size of my room over the course of a couple months, no mixing, just a dude plugging in guitars directly into mixers and tape decks and recording stuff. So let's keep going here for, with our fourth track here. 
Owari no Kitsu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did I said it right? Nobody questioned me on how I said it. And let's go to deck two and let's give a little listen here while I clean up from our little guitar experiment. <laughs> Finally hit a track with a little too much trouble for my liking. <laughs> Kick that down a little bit. Okay, now I hear the band <laughs> when we get that harmonica solo. Much a much more laid back track here, taking a little bit of a of a break here in the middle of our album, even though we're only on track four. But as we talked about earlier, as I've said eight thousand times now, <laughs> this album was recorded in his own apartment. He did this all on himself, and people point to this album in particular as the beginning of the development of this whole tropical sound, this kind of beach vibes thing that we will see in the early '80s becomes absolutely standard looking at you know people even like takanaka if you're looking at seychelles which takanaka he's a prog rock musician you know he's shredding out throughout the 80s 90s to this day but that first album it's very different from the rest of his stuff and it hits on a lot of these tropical ideas we've got recordings of waves and beach you know crashing against all that kind of stuff we've got the same kind of subject matter topics all those kinds of things so hasono was a pioneer of this and we can see how this influence spreads out by looking at the key players. So our percussionist here, Tatsuro Hayashi, one of our main percussionists all throughout City Pop. And as we're looking through here, I think I had already opened his, nope, I closed it. But he was our percussionist for, <laughs> I think it was the last three episodes of Wake and Bass, he was in there. He did both Jackie Chan albums. He was on Raji A's album. Uh, he's played in this, uh, like I said, Tin Pin or Tin Pan Alley. He was in that band with Hosono. Let's go ahead and just jump here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to page three because we're still in 1977 when we jump all the way forward. Let's go to page five. Oh, uh, we're still just in 1980, but now we're starting to see Maria Takayuchi. We see Piper, we see Mayamane, we see Bread and Butter. Keep going. Okay. Let's see if we can find two more people. Ah, Akira Tarara. So that's four weeks in a row because we did him two weeks ago. Yurie Kokubu. Okay. Henri. Plenty. Enough said. So that's one of our people is our percussionist there. Another person that we've got in there is Hiroki Komazawa. He's a guitarist that we see once again, exactly the same kind of thing. If I can click on the right person. <laughs> Here's our steel uh, our steel guitarist, though. He's the guy who's doing all the, the slide guitar stuff. Steel guitar is another way, or is another type of instrument. It, a steel guitar doesn't have to be a slide guitar, but it is made out of steel, and it has a very different sound. But as we're looking through here, starting in the early 70s, and something we haven't even talked about yet is Yellow Magic Orchestra and all the connections that Hasono, because he was the leader of this group, all the things that he did with them and all the musicians he pulled into that group and what happened from all the people then who were in that, who went forward and did other things. It's a huge lineage all from Hasono. So he's like the grandfather of all city pop musicians. Maybe not the genres themselves, but the musicians all look up to Hasono just like, I don't know. They look up to him. <laughs> Now for our next song here, Fuyu Koe. Let's get this one all loaded up here and let's switch on over to the correct deck. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And let's give this a listen. Ooh. All right. We're getting into that R&B rhythm. That funk rhythm that was real popular in the 60s. Let's 
just take a second here and let's look uh look through the personnel here. I'll zoom this in a little for y'all. Okay, maybe not that much. Ooh. I've yet to hear Melodica yet. We'll see if we find that on this one. Okay, fun piano. I like how they say he plays the tape recorder. I respect that. I respect that. Oh, that's awesome. They gave Masako Hosono uh, credit for cooking. <laughs> that is looking out for your people. Give credit where credit is due. There'd be no album if they didn't eat. It's good looking out. Oh, Randomly Generated is getting into some of the good facts. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about that after this track. Good looking out, Randomly. Okay, so we're looking at a slide guitar from uh, Takanaka over here. I don't know if y'all could see this. But <laughs> he put a model on top of his guitar, like a little model house thing. Takanaka, man. Amazing. Amazing. What's up, Pop Bass? You can see, brother. Yeah. I'll take the John Denver vibes. There have been moments earlier on where I would have been like, country music, watch out. The Sono's coming for you. And he's like, no, nah, keep it going. We're just going to fade it out. We're just going to fade it out. Yeah, there it is. Fade it out. Fade it out. I'll help you out. We'll double fade it. Oh, yeah. Okay, very, very cool. Very, very cool. All right, now is time to pull out this little factoid randomly generated hit it hit us up with the the titanic reference so hosono known for so many phenomenal things in his own career for his own accolades all this kind of stuff has a crazy connection to the titanic his grandfather matsubumi hosono which is this guy right here was the only japanese survivor of the titanic and I want to say he was one of the few male survivors. I'm not positive of that second part. But I know, now I, I didn't find this in my morning research here, but I've heard a rumor that this guy was extremely bullied and pressured by society and was viewed with a lot of shame because he didn't go down with the ship. And he returned, and as if you are not familiar with the, the story of the Titanic... When it went down as the unsinkable ship, they weren't prepared to take care of everybody. And then when, surprise, surprise, it sunk, uh, a lot of people died because there weren't enough lifeboats. And so they did women and children first. A lot of men died. Not very many men got off. And it, you were supposed to kind of go down with the ship, that kind of thing. So that's a story that I've heard and I've kind of seen rummaging through the City Pop Discord or what used to be the City Pop Discord. I don't know what they're calling it now The after the great splitting, however we're going to call it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's an interesting connection. Having the only sur Japanese survivor of the Titanic be Grandpa, and then just like, I will use that survivor energy to make awesome music. Good job, Sono. Okay, as we're moving through here with our next track. Ooh, okay, we're getting to Parte. Parte. So this is the track that uh, has a whole bunch of our interesting let's see what did we have here we had a, a melodicas on here i think he said he was going to be playing let's see here yeah 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 thumb piano and piano i'll listen to both kinds of pianos all right here we go sixth track party <laughs>
I love how blah's age is like, we're gonna party, baby. Let's party. Don't wanna hang out. I wanna party. I dig this, man. Okay, that's straight out of Beatles. That was a weird little interview. <laughs> that's cool though, I like it, I like it. I don't know if this qualifies as psychedelic rock. Not yet. At least. party so as we're moving through talking about other references to hosono here we mentioned earlier that he is the founder and leader of the yellow magic orchestra very very big accomplishment that he's got there but also all of these musicians in this first album are big big studio musician influential figures here throughout our whole city pop era uh let's just look real quickly again at all of their names so i can say them at least remotely correctly uh tatsuro hayashi on percussion and drums he plays with so so many different uh acts and groups uh on top of having his own thing uh shigeru suzuki same story with electric guitar he uh is all over the place, all over the place. Uh, Hiroki Komazawa is playing the steel guitar and the slide guitar in a lot of these uh, in these tracks. And then we've got Masataka Matsutoya, our keyboardist, plays lots of Rhodes organ in this album in particular. But all four of these cats are all over city pop in this era. Each one of them in the hundreds of credits for their albums and instrumental contributions, all those kinds of things. Hasono himself, just taking a quick look here at what Hasono has for just his Discog credits, which again, you have to take with a grain of salt because these are incomplete. 35 solo albums. That's solo albums, not including singles or compilations or re reduxes, all that kind of stuff. 1,200 credits. <laughs> That is a redonkulous number of credits, and you can see 400 of them, 422, almost the perfect number. Writing and arrangement credits, really, really amazing number. That's unbelievable. And then if we look at all these other people, same kind of thing. We've got 247 instrumental credits for uh, Tatsuro, our, or Tatsuo, our drummer. Uh, let's look at our guitarist here. 464 credits. And then Matsubaya is probably going to be in thousand. Hey, perfect number, 420. There you go. So he's got, <laughs> he's got that many credits. All these kinds of things. These cats are all over the place. Super, super, super important in the era. Now, let's go back to our album here. Boop, boop. There we go. We just finished our party. So now let's go to Fukuha Uchi Oniha Soto. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just say that is absolutely a line ripped from Star Wars. Uh, that is, at least when I say it, that is what Jabba the Hutt sounds like. So, before I get myself in too much more trouble, we're just going to play the track. Here we go. <laughs> oh, see, even Hasono didn't like it. Ooh. Charlie Brown? Is this you? Happening. Well, we we 
got our island beat. I didn't know that it was mandatory in 1973, but we got it. Maybe a little steel drum? Not really. I bet that's a fun piano. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, this is fun. This does make me kind of miss Nobu Saito, though. Uh, my buttons aren't hooked up. That sounded like scratching. Hold on. I want to know what that was. Okay. I want to see if there's scratching here. I don't think that's scratching. I think that's, there's a, a, it's a percussion instrument that does this, it's like a string in a can kind of thing. I have no idea what the name is, but yeah. Okay, I thought it was scratching, it's not. Yeah, there's the roads right here. Yeah, it could, it could be a thumb piano. I'm thinking that's probably what it is. It's a thumb piano put through some kind of light pedal or like a chorus, something, something like that. I am blown away by how good this sounds for being, again, for those of y'all just joining us, this was recorded in a bedroom, 144 square foot bedroom on a 16 track mixer direct inputs all the major mixing was done after the fact there was very little production done on the individual signals on the sound so very very cool that they they achieved such an interesting and good mix and they use a lot of interesting instruments too okay so there was uh fukuha uchi oni hasoto gotta find the han solo so our next track here uh <laughs> Juso Fute Mushoku Te Shunyo. I should really put in like so much more effort into learning how to say these properly, but I can barely speak English, so I'm gonna stick with that. But ooh. what what if we wandered into here? How do you get that many horns in his bedroom? Oh, that was, now that was helpful. Maybe I didn't mean that. Oh, that is, that is what I meant. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so stupid. Of course, of course that's what it means. <laughs> I would take that, Dave. I would, that could definitely be a pick scratch. so much music here so sorry to cut it down here halfway through our track but looking at the related bands units whatever you want to call it for stuff that has sono has been a part of i mentioned yellow magic orchestra is one of the biggest ones that people think of tin pan array or tin pan alley uh, i think they had a couple different names for that group another big one but you can see april fool i've heard i've not listened to their music but i know that they had a pretty decent uh amount of output but just so many acts here, so many singles, albums, compilations, just almost an infinite amount of music. So when you say best album, these are like 
best of collections, best of hits, compilation albums, soundtracks, remix, all this kind of stuff. Now, another interesting fact about Hisono here, he was one of the people that really saw the potential in video game music and was a pioneer of chiptune, which I just think is crazy because he already has so much influence in so many different areas. But yeah, he was one of the first guys with Namco to listen to their music and to not only try to re-record it or remix it, but just acknowledge that, hey, these computer graphic sounds, these synth sounds are cool. And this is an important instrument. Like we need, we really need to pursue this. And so I want to say, I need to look up the exact date, but I want to say it was something like 1981 or 1980. He released an album that was a re-release of Namco songs from Pac-Man, Galica, those kinds of things. So the uh, very, I mean, again, just influential in so many different ways and not only prolific, but diverse. So he's not only putting out a ton of stuff, but it's not just the same thing over and over. He's really, really developing over time. Okay, now we're getting towards the end here. We got three more tracks, and a, one of them is only 18 seconds long. But the next one we got is Koi Wa Momorio. I have no idea what this means, but we're going to plug it in. And if it once again translates it to Koi Wa Momorio, I'm going to be a little salty, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's find out. Love is pink. Hey, finally. Got one. <laughs> Is this a cover? Huh. So we were mentioning earlier that one of the big influences for this album is music from Big Pink, which is a album by the band, and this song is called Pink Love. And this sounds exactly like the band. <laughs> so it's like, is this a cover? No, this is just his own personal take on this. Very cool. Good job, son. That's a good point, Break. We're going to give his son the benefit of the doubt, and he's not one of our city pop <laughs> thieves. Stealing jams. Robin, I'm looking at you, 1993, stealing from Chicka Chip. Let's see what the most recent thing he did is. So his most recent single was 2018. Wow. Man, that is crazy. Hey, do do do. There you go. Yeah. Oh, man, with his 1,200 credits. Oh, Hasono, you beast. You beast. Oh, yeah. No resolution. Ended on the four chord. What key are we in? I don't know. And Hisono don't care. That was a cool way to end that song. All right. This is a cool album. So we've got, for me, I keep going back and forth between hearing just like, oh, this is a really cool, just kind of folk rock album. Just very chill, very cool. And then having all these intense flashbacks to like wait what Beatles album is that is this before or after that one wait <laughs> and that's you know again we've looked at a lot of artists who were really influenced by the Beatles and I think the most recent one we looked at was uh, let's see here was it Tatsuaki 
Aquino. I'm trying to remember his name, but he uh, was talking about how he was so influenced by the Beatles that he wanted to get away from them because it, it was just too much influence. He's like, ah, it's, it's too good, and, and all my stuff sounds like them. I don't want to sound like them. But Hasono here, I think, is taking that influence very knowingly and making his own thing out of it. And especially with our last or our two songs ago, our uh, Love is Pink, or actually that was this song. Uh, it was a homage to the band for music from Big Pink. And it took all those same kinds of uh, instruments and ideas and musical tropes and put them together in a new way. So, good on you, Hisono. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. Oh, we got some uh, extra info here from Break here. So it looks like he did a cover of the Chattanooga Choo Choo in his next album, despite it having drastically different sound than the original track here. And Hasono House was the last album where he took the album and added his electric influences to it. Hmm. Oh, Hachono House. Haha, not Hasono. There we go. And yes, as Master of Al said, still active. Still very much active. Not only making new albums, but playing regularly. Okay, so we are almost done here. Let's see what we got left. We got Rose and the Beast. So there's this. Well, I don't know why I'm trying to copy that. <laughs> now let's see if I can figure out. Uh, if I can find that on here. Aha, there we go. There we go. I knew I had the track on here somewhere. Ooh. Okay. Now we're getting a little psychedelic rock. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that organ. This is another good time to point out. He's the only vocalist on the album. Crushing it by himself. Oh, listen to that. Oh, can I get it one more time? I lied. Just one more time. Yeah. Oh, cool. You... Okay. I'm going to pause it for a second. I never do this. When you hear these, you're going to hear these weird, like, it almost sounds like someone's taking a, a slinky and messing it around, you know, going like that. That's a manipulation of reverb. So what he's doing, because again, all of this is being done in a home studio with home equipment direct in, not a lot of processing, not a lot of clean audio sound. So he has to be really creative. And this is a non-intended use of a reverb pedal. Because normally if you hear that, your reverb is up way too high and you're getting these like, you know, it's too much gating. But if you do it on individual notes, you get this cool. So we're going to. I'm going to rewind that a little bit and we're going to listen to that one more time listening for that and he's using reverb on a snare drum of all things which is only the only thing that does is make it funky doesn't really add anything else it's just a little bit of and now it's off it was just for that little middle section he puts a lot of reverb on that snare very cool Okay, now we're getting psych rock. Oh, there's that Rhodes. And there's that reverb. That bass crushing. And again, that's him. Hosono playing bass. 
and he plays bass on a lot of albums too. Part of his 1,200 credits. Ah, I love it so much. Ah, only gave it to me once that time. Hasono, man, right from the get-go, coming out the gate swinging hard. This album is awesome. This is the last track, man. He saved us all the way to the end. And this is just a rocking, rocking track here. I mean, it almost sounds like a different band. Almost. It is that dun-dun. walking up. <laughs> See, he thinks it's funny too. Oh, they're turning up the they're turning up the wobble on the keyboard. Oh, they turned it back down. <laughs> oh, see, it's changing. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that's kind of musician fun because you got the same line it's a cool line how do we make it different da 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 turn this knob a little bit da 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 ooh turn this knob a little more da 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 okay Anybody out there, aspiring DJs? Here's your next sample. I'm getting getting off topic here. Man, that is a cool song. That is a cool song. The Sono, on fire here. So we've had a very interesting album all the way through. All sorts of different references to different artists from the 60s, from things that are going to happen later in the 70s. Keep in mind, this is 1973. All done in his own apartment in his house. All taken care of with no or very little production on the sound line. We're doing a lot of direct in and using creativity and using a lot of, as we saw today, different instruments, different pedals, different looping ideas as far as how you route your sound. How we heard that real crazy reverb ping that he put on the snare drum just to give it an extra cool flare. All the vocals since he did them all himself recording with different mics or with different sounds to give it a different feel depending on what song he was doing. Very, very cool stuff. Now, the last thing we've got is this little, what I'm going to call a Beatles tag, because I just can't get enough Beatles. Uh, it's a little 18 seconds here, 20 seconds long. So let's see, uh, let's see how Hisono wants to say goodbye to us here for 20 seconds. Let's review the top 20. Oh, you're only going to give us 20 seconds of this? I take it back. That is the new sample of the year. Oh my goodness. I gotta hear that again. Top, top 20. 20. Ah, oh, yeah. Check it out. Charlie, get it with your sand. Beastie, beastie boys coming at you all day. If I could rap, then I'd be super famous, but I can't, so I got my own YouTube channel like what? Atlantic Records, I'll take my million dollars literally any time now. You just say the word. Okay, pretty cool day here. Haromi Hasono, very, very cool artist, really accomplished a lot in one month, five hours a day for one month. So anybody who says you can't accomplish anything, lock yourself in an apartment for five hours a day for a month, and then you tell me what happens. But lots of cool artists. We're going to see a ton more coming from this cat in the future. Again, Yellow Magic Orchestra is probably the most famous group he was a part of or led. However, that's not saying nearly enough for all the artists that he influenced, worked with, produced, ghost wrote for, still writing today, still performing today, all these kinds of things. 
Okay, well, thank you all for hanging out. I know it sucks only having one waking base a week, but I'm dying here working on my school stuff, trying to get finished up. Almost done, though, almost done. But what we're going to be doing here today is a little help and thank you to everybody. There have been a lot of questions piling up about different things on how to do mixing ideas with uh, some of y'all who are doing the same kind of things I am, trying to, you know, put your bass or your guitar on top of other tracks talk about layering i'm gonna hook y'all up with that we're gonna do a video here in about 20 or 30 minutes i'm gonna come back on live stream i'm just gonna go through and do as many of the questions as i can think of if y'all have stuff you want to uh, add you can go into the discord you can put questions in there you can come to live chat do stuff there i'm gonna do it live and then i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna snip it up into small into a more discreet group of pieces so that other people who are watching later don't have to sift through all the extra time. But that's what I'm going to do because you guys have been fantastic and so awesome and supportive to me and such good ideas for all of the tabs and content on the channel. So I'm going to help you out, pay you back with that. Uh, as always, if you guys had a good time this morning, a like and subscribe always helps. Uh, please come join us on the Discord channel in the link in the description underneath YouTube uh, down here. We've got that link. Uh, never expires. Come join us. We're a cool community. We have a lot of fun, and it's just a chill place. And it's not all city pop, too. We've also got people putting in music from just 70s, 80s, 90s, current stuff, current funk, current pop, hanging out, talking about cool things, spreading memes, you know, doing the good stuff. Anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Friday if I don't see you here in a little bit. And if I do, get those questions ready, because I'm ready to go ham on some information. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you later.